Today we are doing Malchut Beit David, the the um, reign, the kingdom of the house of David. That's the name given to the to the blessing. Um, let's look at the words, and then we'll understand the concepts. Okay. Um, at we start at. This doesn't really translate into Hebrew, but it's used when we have a um, a verb in the sentence. Semach David. Semach. Semach means to sprout. It's a good translation. Smachim uh, um, are flowers, right? Prachim, smachim are flowers, but things that sprout in modern Hebrew. So we, we speak about the Messiah. This this whole blessing is the ble the blessing for the Messiah, and we speak we we term him. We call the Messiah the sprouting of David. Um, and then David is David Avdecha, your servant. So may the sprouting of David, your certain, your your servant, Mehira, we've had that word often. We're always in a rush as Jews, right? <laughs> in a hurry, soon, right? We, we can't take it anymore, soon. Um, Satsmiach, it, it would actually be fascinating to go through this prayer service and see the, um, the J Jewish nature formed by a prayer service. It, it has to have had influence. <laughs> It can't be you sit there three times a day saying something and it doesn't wear off on you. So I say it tongue in cheek, but it would be an interesting thing to look at. So the sprout of David, your servant, soon, satsmiach. Satsmiach means you should make him sprout. You are going to cause this to happen. The karno, his now, a Karen is really one of two things, actually. A Karen is a horn or a the radiance. Right? In last week's Pasha, we had that Moses came down from the mountain, the second, actually the third time with the second set of tablets. And what had happened? Karen or Panav. There was a radiance coming from his a radiance coming from his uh, face, from the skin on his face. Um, Michelangelo went with the interpretation horn. Therefore, Michelangelo's Moses has two little horns. Do you know that? It comes from, it, it comes from that verse. But really, the intention over there was, they, they were not really horns. They were, there was a radiance. Now, like a ray of sunshine, it, it, it's somewhat similar to a horn. So, um, the karnoi, his horn, his radiance, tarum. Now, the grammar over here is actually not correct, and, and, and raised, should be raised, meaning, and his horn will be raised. That's really what it means. His horn will be room. Room is to go up. Ram is, is on top. Ram. Uh, uh, so tarum, it shall be raised. His horn, his radiance shall be raised. Be Yeshua Techa. So ba is in. Yeshua is redemption, saving. Techa ha is yours. When you save us, when you redeem us, God, we know that the horn, the radiance of King David, of the Messiah, is going to, to be raised up. Okay, so that's the first, the first part, as I like to call it. And the second part is key, because God, for your redemption, for your saving, Kivinu, we hope, Call Hayoim all day. That's 
the people. Right? We are the people, God. We are your nation. Deep down, we're all waiting for your redemption all day long. Baruch Atah Hashem, and blessed are you, God. Matzmiach Karen Yeshua, who causes to sprout, who causes to sprout, Matzmiach. By the way, if you have a, um, a noun and you put a mem before it, this is an important Hebrew lesson, the mem changes it into the noun. So it sprouts, a uh, sprouting, matzmiach, make to sprout. You, 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 you're sprouting. Um, it's the verb, karen, again, we go back to this horn or radiance of Yeshua of redemption. Um, okay, so this is the this is the um, the blessing dealing with the Messiah. Uh, what's going on in it? Okay, so again, and before you go on, Rabbi, mm -hmm. you know you know when they're derogatory to Jews and they say that Jews have horns, it doesn't come from this or does it come from this? It, I think it comes from that. Yes. Yeah. It comes from the fact that Moses, it, the Torah says he had, had these, ra these rays. So that's, uh, that's, um, that's where it comes from. I don't know to what degree the statue that Michelangelo made had influenced that. It might have. I mean, he was the greatest sculptor of all time. Um, okay. Um, okay. So we got we got these two. Now the next time anyone says you you've got horns, you just say. Want to see what's under my shade for? Okay. Um, okay, so we have these two parts again. Um, let's look at them. First of all, um, the Messiah is connected to David, to King David. That means there's a covenant. There's a covenant that God made with the with King David and his house that the kings. The kingdom, the, the kings of the Jews will always come through his lineage. Um, there's a fascinating part of Jewish history, actually, is when the Hasmoneans, now the Hasmoneans were not of the lineage of David. They didn't, they don't trace themselves back to King David. They were Kohanim, they were priests. Right, even water priests, Kohanim, Co Cohen's, they were of the priestly family. Yet, after the after the um, the success that they had, they actually took the monarchy, um, which was very strange, actually. And this question: How how could they do it? They they knew well that the, the king of the Jews had to be a descendant of King David. Um, it didn't last very long, the monarchy, by the way. Um, it, it was soon after the uh, Hanukkah story, it's not long until the uh, Romans destroy the temple and that comes to an end. Um, it's been a long time. We haven't had a king for a long time. So, the, But tradition has it that King David his descendant, his descendant. Now, David, of course, goes back to Yehuda, right? Yehuda, that's uh, Yehuda, that's uh, Judah, Judah. Um, and that goes back to the blessing that Yaakov Avinu, that Jacob, when he gave his 12 children their blessings at the end of his life. So it says there, what does it say there? Let's find that quickly. Um, I 
in our Tanakh at the end of Genesis. Maybe 49, maybe. He says, gather around my children. And he says, Reuven, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda. Um, and he says, um, look at the blessing that Jacob gives Yehuda. Yehuda atai yodecha echicha. Oh, Judah. Now, he was the fourth born. The fourth born out of the 12, uh, 12 actually, 11 sons. Um, o oh Judah, your brother shall praise you. Your hand shall be on the nape of your foes. Your father's sons shall bow low to you. It's giving him leadership. Judah is a lion's whelp. On prey, he, my son, ha have you grown? He crouches, lies down like a lion. Like the king of beasts who dare rouses him. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet. So that tribute shall come to him and homage of people be his. What's the time, darling? So, 42 uh, 11. So, Lo, Lo Yasu Shevet Yehuda was Jacob, Yaakov, giving this really prophecy and blessing that um, it will be the tribe of Yehuda that will lead the Jewish people. Um, and that came about when King David became the king. So when King David became the king, who traces himself back to Yehuda, it was then from then on, all the kings needed to be from King David. Um, so that's, that's the um, that's the covenant right covenant always it means that the identities are wrapped up one in another there's a promise um see more about that later now semach is interesting i know linda you didn't see the jerusalem one but you'll go back you listen to it jerusalem is built king dave the messiah sprouts one is organic and one is mechanical, right? You build a building brick on top of brick. It's, it's, it's very structured. It needs a plan. Semach means that this will sprout. This will organically ar arouse. The, the Messiah will come out somehow. Somehow the world, um, history will produce a Messiah, will produce this, this person who um, will who will redeem us? Now that's important because there's always a in Jewish the Jewish way of looking at history is that it's developing history. I know that the, the Bible Belt doesn't like the idea of evolution, but it's probably the most religious idea one can find. The world, of course, is evolving. The whole you know, the Jewish people really, I think, I don't know if it's Rabbi Sachs, but you know, the Jewish people gave hope to the world. The idea that world, the life can get better, the world can be perfected, there will be this messianic utopian age. We're working towards it, we're moving towards it, is what probably the most hopeful message in the world you know imagine living with no no feeling with no vision for a better world you know? that, that's that's you know we, we we were joking earlier you know what what's been the effect of the jewish of this of these prayers on the jewish people the fact that we lived in a in out of Israel, without our own country, in all these places, and for almost 2,000 years lived that way. And yet, we were a people different and, and wanted to go back to Israel and wanted to reestablish it. It's because we live with hope. You know, every day, three times a day, you turn around and say, God, things are okay, but they could be a lot better. Right? Please help us make it make it better. That that's a very positive, positive, hopeful message. 
Um, and and to add to that, that God made us in the image of of God so that we can be partners in exactly. We can't just hope. Hope is really important and prayer is really important and please God, please God be with us. But it reminds me of that joke. I don't even remember, but he, you know, something happened three times and the guy finally said, God, please, why are you not helping me? And she goes, I sent you three messages. You've got to do something. It's not like we can just depend on God. We have to. Right. So actually, Linda, excellent. Well done. Because I think that really is a very strong theme in this prayer. Because look at it this way. We start asking for this man, David. David's going to be our savior. And then we talk about when you save us, God. And then we, we say we, we've been waiting for yours. You know, you're going to save us. Um, and then in the end, it's the radiance of redemption. Well, who's doing it? Is the Messiah doing anything? Or is God doing it? Who's, you know, this man, you know, in, in simple practical terms, the job of the Messiah, pretty big job, actually. He needs to make world peace. He needs to bring the Jews back to Israel. He needs to rebuild the, the, the temple. He needs to reinstitute the Sanhedrin, the, the, the high court. I mean, he has to restore the Jewish people to the land of Israel. Um, he has to restore the land to all the, to the ancestral land holding, right? We've got a nice plot on near Netanya, hopefully. Um, he's gonna, he's, right? He's got this huge job. So, you know, the Messiah is an impressive figure. He's not no one yet. It's God redeeming us. So I think, I have this in my notes. It's amazing that you said that. Um, I think that that's really the idea of the covenant as well. Is that God, as my friend Maestro Tozo, uh, the glass blower. We still have to go there one day, Linda. Yeah, you talk about him all the time. Oh, he's amazing. He, he's an, it's like a different world with him. But he, he always says that we... We were given the task to complete the mitzvah of creation. And, you know, that's a, that's a very, it's a very deep thought. I was, I was giving a class yesterday about tzitzit. You know, what, why, do, why do the tzitzit on the corners of the garment, you know, they, they are tied, there, there are five um, knots. The five knots with uh, wrappings around, and then they hang. They hang loose. And my mother will tell you they sometimes look un uh, tidy, untidy. You know, <laughs> they messy. The truth is, they uh, you, you think it's fun to try wear tzitzis when you're trying to do the uh, to mow the lawn or, uh, or, or or blow the blow the leaves. That machine sucks in your tzitzis. <laughs> It's, in, it's, it's not easy, but says the Sfas Emes. The Sfas Emes was one of the uh, first rabbis of Gur. There's a huge Hasidic group in Israel today called Gur. And um, he said, because you should look at the tzitzit and remember the mitzvot. And you should know that the world is somewhat put together. There are knots, there are, there are twinings, but there's a lot that's loose. And through doing the mitzvot, we are tidying up that which is loose. We are perfecting the world. We are completing the mitzvah of creation. That's what we are doing. So God, God is our guide. God is our, the force that he's, you know, he, He's given, what, what does it say in Pekah Avot, right? Give back to God because it's all from God in the first place, right? That's the idea over here of Avdecha, of your servant. Now, 
uh, I think we've touched on that. We, we don't love the idea of Eved, definitely the word slave. We don't like the word of servant, even it's a bit derogatory. Um, because it is, it's derogatory that one person should serve another. But to serve God is not derogatory at all. To serve God is the greatest honor any person could have. Um, you know, listen, we wouldn't want to do it all the time. But if the president came to town and you were asked to drive him, you were, wow, what an honor. I can drive the president. Depends on, okay. We'll get into, the we'll won't, get into, won't get into politics. But, <laughs> but being a servant of God means serving God's purpose, right? It's, it's very, it's very um, circular. God cares for us. God creates a world for us. God says, the best thing I can do is give you the opportunity to fix this world because then it's your world that's fixed as well as mine. And we turn around to God and say, God, we'll do it for you. We want your kingdom to be known on earth. We want your laws to be kept. We want your beauty to be revealed. So we live for each other. You know, it's, it's a, um, that's a, a healthy marriage has where each person looks out for the other one. Right? The other one comes first often. You put yourself out there for your spouse. Because so wait a minute, Rabbi, what did you say? Being a servant to God means? Means serving his purpose. Thank you. And his purpose is to fix this world. So King David, more than anyone else, was the paradigm of that. That, that King David put himself completely into the service of God. Um, and that's why there's this covenant with David. Because he exemplified that. Now why, you know, there's a question. Why, was, why didn't David become the Messiah? He himself. Why didn't he himself become the Messiah? He was so... I don't know. I don't know. But maybe maybe the world wasn't ready. Maybe the world wasn't ready. There was still more to do. Must have been. Um, maybe he wasn't 100% ready, right? He's uh, King David. The Gomorrah says, the Talmud says, the people sin at the golden calf to show a, a group how to do teshuva, to repent. To, and King David sinned with Bathsheba in order to teach the individual how to do teshuva, right? So he wasn't perfect. I mean, he, you know, so, but he, he definitely, he did teshuva. He did, I mean, if you, if you read Tehillim, you read the Psalms and you, yeah, it's so beautiful the way that he expresses himself. I mean, Ashrei Yoshua Vezechah, the, the Ashrei is King David. That's, um, yeah, he's the bread and butter of our, our prayer service. Okay, so it's the it's and this is going to come out of this is going to come out of history. It's going the sprout of David, and of course he's going to carry the character traits of King David. This Messiah will um, will be your who was your servant, King David. Um, you should make him sprout. Just by the way, in in a from a technical point of view, um, when the Jewish people lived in Israel, um, before the Babylonian exile, so the, we, we, were, we, we were autonomous in the land of Israel, there was King David and King Solomon. Um, soon after King Solomon, there was a civil war, unfortunately, and the Jews split, the 10 tribes and the two tribes. The 10 tribes were called the northern tribes, or the, the main one was Ephraim. The southern two tribes were Yehuda, Judah, and Benjamin, and Benjamin. There was a king from Syria, or the north, that came, um, and he exiled the 10 tribes. They called the lost 10 tribes. We don't know where they are. 
Can you imagine? 10 out of 12 is five out of six. What's that in percentage? A lot. Yeah. Can, can you imagine um, more than 80, right? What's five out of six? Uh, 83%, 83% of the Jews got lost, were taken away. Sam Kherif, he put them in different lands, he mixed everyone around. Can you imagine 83% of the Jewish world disappears? No, they didn't die, they, they went into, right? So there's a lot of, the Talmud wants to know, are they coming back? Are they coming back? You know, the, the, there have been interesting people, interesting people that have claim to be one of the lost tribes. Most recently, and most importantly, are the Ethiopian Jews, right? It was a big question whether or not, you know, no one had contact with these people for over a thousand years, and here they come out of the woodwork and say, we're Jews. And there was a rabbinic controversy, like, like, what do we do? How do we know? Like, we can't just, you know, I'm a Jew, very nice. Now, how do we know? They don't have the oral law even. They don't, even, they don't have the Talmud. And Rabbi Vodya, uh, Avadia Yosef, the, 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 the chief uh, Sephardi rabbi of Israel, said, no, they're Jewish and they belong to the tribe of Dan. They come from the, the, the tribe of Dan. And hence, Israel, at huge expense, at huge risk, at huge challenge to integrate these people into Israeli society brought them, brought them to because they are brothers and the, the tribe of Dan. So, um, but most of us are from either the tribe of Yehuda, most of us who are, you know, follow the, the usual story of Judaism, history of Judah, we are either from the tribe of Yehuda, Judah, or Benjamin, or, or Benjamin. And of course, there are Kohanim and Levim that they, they, didn't have a, they didn't have a specific area in Israel where they lived. They were spread out throughout the nation, right? I mean, just geographically, it's an amazing thing to think that God put a whole tribe um, to basically as teachers, as teachers and people that would do the temple service on behalf of the people, all scattered around the whole nation. Um, so we come from Yehuda. We come from Yehuda. And so who knows? Maybe one of us will be Messiah. I'm not going to put my money on it, but who knows? Okay. So says the, uh, says the prayer. Now, so that's the first thing. God, it's you redeem us through this Messiah. Which and he's your servant, so he's 100% devoted to you, you 100% devoted to us. That's how it works, right? To see the ultimate, Linda, in your um, in your, your feeling that you have, which is correct. You know, we can't just pray all day, we've got to do something. Um, the ultimate fruition or result, what, what we really want is that which we say in the Psalms is, you know, God establish our handiwork, which means that we'll become aware, our, we'll, we'll have a, a um, heightened state of awareness of consciousness that it's really, it's God's power and it's God's gifts to us that we are just choosing to use in his service. And that's, that's the, you know, that's the combination. That's the, that's the beauty of this, um, of the covenant, of this relationship we have with God. God who is not physical, is so far away. And yet we can do something. Yeah, God. Okay. The second part always deals with God. We are your people. We represent you here on earth, right? We are the... Um, one of my rabbis likes to say, we are the embassy of God, all right? The Jewish people is the embassy of God here on earth, right? So 
כי לישוע שלך קווינו כל היום. We hope, we hope for your redemption all day, um, for your sake, for our sake, right? Um, and then we end, Baruch Atah Hashem, blessed are you God, Matzmiach, who causes to sprout, Karen Yeshua, um, the, the horn of redemption. So I, I said before that it's either horn or radiance. The two ways to rule, right? Karen, the two ways to, um, to influence others, to, 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 have a, to have an effect on others, either through power. So in terms of the Messiah, he will be very powerful. The, the, the wicked of the world, we say in our prayer, in the Lenu, right? The, 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 the whole world will be humbled. All the wicked people in the world will be humbled. That's because the Messiah will have a horn. He'll have a tremendous, tremendous power. Um, for those who, who are not wicked but need instruction, so then he is the radiance. That's the radiance, the, the, the idea of light, enlightening. Um, and that's why we ask God to um, lift him up, lift up that horn, lift up that radiance, because in that way, it will have its widest, greatest effect over the entire world. Um, so that really is the end of the section of um, national prayer, right? If we just go back quickly. Um, so we, we, we started with, the, with three blessings in the beginning. Um, the first one about Abraham, again, Abraham, then Gevurot, about God's strength, and then Kedusha, about God's holiness. Then we started to ask for personal um, blessings. Bina, intellect, intellect, mind, consciousness. Teshu, teshuva, we asked for, for Torah, for being able to serve God. Then we asked for Slicha, forgiveness. Then we asked for Geula, personal redemption. And we asked for refuah, for well-being, health, for birchat hashanim, for the, the blessing of the years, for, for well-being. Then, so those were all personal. Then we went into the national prayers. Kibbutz Galiot, God redeem us from the four corners of the earth. Din, restore the judges. Birchat minim, get rid of the heretics. Tzadikim, that the people will be uplifted, the people will be blessed. Um, Jerusalem, build Jerusalem, and then finally, um, and bring the Messiah. That is the, really the last prayer for the nations. So we've now done, we've praised God, we've prayed for individuals, we've prayed for the nation. The next prayer will be Kabbalat Vila, God that you accept our, our prayers which really is a generic over all of them. Um, and then we, we have the last three, which are called Thanksgiving prayers. So um, whatever you want, whatever we don't know we want, is really contained in, um, we have 19, take away 6, 13, take away 1, 12. Um, in these 12 prayers, this, this is our, um, this is the collection of, of prayers. I, I, I don't know, I think I might have shared it with you at the beginning. You heard us, my wife once went to, I uh, was teaching in Israel at a school. And before, and she was teaching the Shemona Esrei. Before she did it, she asked everyone to write down their prayers, what, what they want. Um, and they could list however many things they wanted. And after a while, she, she took that and wrote it all up on the board. And then she went through the Shemona Esrei with them. And then at the end, she showed every single one how they are contained somewhere 
in these prayers. And there's much more in these prayers than most of us think about on a daily basis. The end. Perhaps I can have some private lessons in the next week. Yes, we look forward. So we'll, <laughs> we can do right. next week's from uh, Los Angeles. So the first three are blessings. The first three are blessings, right? Okay, yeah. P praise. The, uh, the word blessing is a little misleading. because. So the first three are that, what? That praise. We, we're praising God's kindness, his strength, and his holiness. Okay, so the first three, the patriarch. The second one is Guvurot. Mm -hmm. And the third one, godly qualities. Then we get into the individual prayers. Correct. And that goes from Bina. Forgive us, redemption, physical healing, health, well-being. That's it. Okay. And then we go into national. Correct. Got it. So sometimes you're on the local board. Sometimes you're on the national board. You know how it goes. Yes, I do. <laughs> All right, so then that's the judgment or laws, that's her, uh, heretics and the righteous people. Yes, that's on a national level that the, we should be a nation of Sadiqim, of, of righteous people. And then now we're getting into Yerushalayim, what is that? That's the one you missed. Right, and that's, that's to build the city. So that's still national. Yes, to rebuild the the capital, yes. And then today we did bringing the Messiah, which is six. And then to next time, Wednesday, we'll get into the, the remainder, which are? Just acceptance of prayer. And then three, what's called Thanksgiving blessings. Got it. So the first one, Listen to our voice, Master of all. That's the acceptance of prayer. Is that how it translates? Yes, Shmuel Yes. And then after that is the three Thanksgivings. The three. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm I'm just getting there. Yeah, fantastic. It's quite complicated, but we we're doing great. Fantastic. <laughs>